to build on this morning. Each service is not independent of itself, but it's, it's a work as we're trying to build and grow, grow up. A sure house. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. Amen. I believe somebody can be healed before we leave this place tonight. I believe somebody can be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost before we leave this place tonight. I believe somebody else can be loosed from the bondage of fear before we leave this place. The bondage of a low self-image from low self-esteem. That's not of God. It's not the same as being humble. Stop beating yourself up. You're a child of God. Hallelujah. You're important in the kingdom. We are his workmanship. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Doesn't that excite you? There's different giftings. There's different manifestations. There's just all kinds of different people. But God is no respecter of persons. What he'll do for you, he'll do for somebody else. What he's done for somebody else, he'll do for you. Are you excited about that? hungry for a change in their life. I pray, God, that you will help us minister into somebody's life tonight. Let this word go out and do that which it was intended to do as we truly realize uh, that we allow you to manifest that you don't hold one person above another, but we are all your children. We are all special to you. The apple of your eye, we are from above and not from beneath. We are the head and not the tail. Help us to realize that and remember it uh, and declare it uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Clap your hands one more time and you can be seated. Hallelujah. With these words, the words I just read to you in 10 and 34 of Acts, was the gospel of Jesus Christ opened up to the entire world. In Acts chapter number 2, it was delivered, Brother Billy, to the Jews and to the Jews only in Acts chapter number 2. In Acts chapter number 8, Brother Robbie, it was delivered to the Samaritans, uh, which were half-breed Jews, half-Jew and half-Gentile. But in Acts the 10th chapter is the gospel opened up uh, to the whole world. Everybody, everybody, whosoever will can receive uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, can be buried in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, and have every Every one of your sins, uh, every one of your sins uh, washed away, uh, washed away and cast as far as the east is from the west. Uh, every one. But the Bible says there's some qualifications in you being able to receive the gospel. Uh, number one is you've got to fear the Lord. You've got to fear the Lord. That fear is not a fear like I talked about this morning, but it is a fear rooted in awe and respect and wonder, Brother David, when I consider the sun, the moon, the stars and all that is therein what is man that thou art mindful of him we've got to do what the Lord declares for us to do we've got to be righteous and do right works before the Lord if you do these two things if you believe on him if you fear him if you have proper respect for him and you do what's right you are accepted with him the only two right things we have to do things. Uh, the whole gospel is summed up in two commandments. Uh, number one, love the Lord thy God with everything that's within you. And number two is love everybody else. Uh, love the Lord with everything you've got uh, and love everybody else. Uh, if you love him with everything you've got, you want to obey every word that he says. Uh, if you love him with everything you've got, uh, you won't be afraid of what the devil comes against you. Uh, if you love him with everything you've got, you'll have the faith to see mountains moved. Uh, you'll have the faith to see demons put uh, cast out. You'll have the faith to see disease cast away if you love the Lord with all of your heart. 
and then we got to love everybody else. Oh, let me tell you something. You start preaching revival, you start telling revival, you start talking about souls uh, and talking about being like Jesus, uh, he'll make you put your money where your mouth is. And everybody, you hear me right now, everybody is not as lovable as the next person. But Brother Terry, the commandment of the Lord is not based upon their lovableness. It's based upon the love that I have of Christ with inside of me. It's not based upon their qualifications, but it's based upon what God can do for them if I will just show them Jesus in me and show the love of Christ then I can make a difference and change their lives. We're not going to get a bunch of perfect people. But just like with Jesus, Brother Terry, they brought to him the blind, the lame, the halt, the crippled, the diseased, and the afflicted. They all had problems that came to Jesus. I I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Say, well, I'm not like that. No, but you were. The Bible says, and such were some of you. But you've been changed. You've been regenerated. You've been delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why it's so essential that we stand up and testify of God's grace and of God's mercy and of God's miraculous power. That we stand up and testify of how he forgave us of our sins. He took that heavy load off of us. It's important that we share with the world what God has done for us. The word was first sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. And then in parentheses it says, he is Lord of all. He is Lord of all. I think it was Sister Casey put it on Facebook this afternoon. I don't even know what song she and my wife were talking about. But they said something about the power in the name of Jesus. I got to tell you tonight, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what kind of disease, what kind of depression, what kind of emotional difficulty. Or Brother Kenny, financial difficulty. Everything you put a name to, there's a name that's above that. And it's the name of Jesus. The Bible says he hath highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. Now, you can't just speak the name with power, but when you speak the name with revelation and power, when you realize what name you're speaking, that everything in heaven and earth is subject to the name of Jesus. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. Brother Pete, that's why it's so important that I get baptized in the name of Jesus. Because, Brother David, I'm taking on the power of that name, the authority of that name. I am being born into the family of God. Jesus, 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 he is Lord of all. That word which was preached throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. And I can't help but get excited when I talk about the baptism John preached because it was really good for right then. But Brother Billy, he never failed to say, oh, this is good for right now, but there's one coming after me who's mightier than I. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He will baptize you. you be engulfed. You'll be covered. You'll be consumed with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And this is the effects of it. What you see in this house tonight is the the overflow of a forgiven soul. No, I'm not worthy. No, I don't deserve it. Brother Chris, sometimes I can't figure out why he loved me. He loved me when I didn't love me. I'm glad Brother Johnson's song has has ministered in my life. His hand reached further down. (laughs) And I perceive that God, if if he reached down and got a hold of me, he'll reach down and get a hold of you. If he'll reach down and get a hold of my old Henri brother right here, he'll get a hold of your Henri brother. If he'll reach down and get a hold of your kids, my kids, he'll get a hold of your kids because, oh, somebody better grab a hold of this this morning, this evening. God is no respecter of persons. 
You just got to fear him. Got to fear him because Brother McKinney, he is God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Jesus Christ was God manifest in the likeness of sinful flesh. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He was God. He was both the root and the offspring of Jesse. He's the lion and he's the lamb. He's the rock in the wilderness. He's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the lily of the valley. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the bride and the morning star. He's the lamb for sinners slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus was God. And when I declare the name of Jesus, I'm declaring the name that all creation recognizes as the greatest name that lived. That's why, my friends, we preach that you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Here's what they preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Somebody say, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for them, he'll do it for me. And if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. He that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Verse 39, then Peter testified to them. Somebody said, I can testify. Come on. Let's say do it better. I will testify. Because I found out that my word of testimony helps me overcome the devil. So I'm going to testify. I'm going to testify. There's an old song, boy, I wish I could sing it. As I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. I've got a testimony. But it is not a testimony as long as it's inside of me. It is not a testimony till I speak it. And Peter is testifying. That's all he's doing to these people, Brother McKinney, is he's testifying to them. Notice this, verse 39. Then Peter testified to them and said, We saw everything that he did, both in the land of the Jews and at Jerusalem. And then they slew him and hung him on a tree. But verse 40, he didn't waste no time. He didn't glorify what they did to him. He didn't waste no time because he said him. God raised up the third day and showed him openly. It wasn't hid. He was seen of above 500 people at once. Peter's just testifying to them of this simple gospel, of this simple truth, of the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have no other gospel. We have no other truth. This is all there is, is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the likeness of his death, which is baptism. I mean, excuse me, repentance. The likeness of his burial, which is baptism in Jesus' name, and the likeness of his resurrection which is the infilling, the baptism, the endowment of the Holy Ghost. And he said everybody didn't get to see it, but witnesses chosen before by God. Us disciples were chosen because we did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And then he commanded us. Are we there? And he commanded us to preach unto the people. And to and to testify that it was he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick, that means the alive and the dead. He judges both the living and the dead. Not just because he said it, but because he said it, they believed it, they obeyed it, and received it. And I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. 
To him give all the prophets witness. All the prophets witness. Brother McKinney, that's all the prophets from the Old Testament who prophesied that he would come. And the prophets of the New Testament who prophesied that he is here. And then he says, verse 43, back up. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. There's only one thing separating you from God. That's sin. He's paid the price. All you got to do is just believe and say, well, how do you know I believe? Because you obey the word. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Brother Shannon, I believe that's truth with all of my heart. I believe that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I read it, I obeyed it, and he filled me with his precious spirit. And Brother Dole, there ain't nothing ever in my life been the same. When you get the Holy Ghost, you can't even sin with a clear conscience anymore. Because the Spirit will lead and guide and direct you. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in his name shall receive remission of sins. In verse 44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. I ask myself today, Brother McKinney, what's the difference? What's the difference? We've made it so formal. you got to wait till the invitation to come forward. I don't believe that's Bible. I don't find altar calls in the Bible anywhere. But the Bible said, while Peter yet spake these words, what words did Peter speak? Jesus loved you. He died for you. He was buried for you. Oh, but on the third day, he rose again. And whosoever believeth that, whoever believes that can have that separator taken out. The sin that has separated us from God can have it removed and taken away. And the Bible said, while Peter yet spake these words, why were they so eager to receive it? Because they'd been searching for it so eagerly. Because they were so hungry. Because Cornelius had prayed so much and gave so much away that he sent a memorial up into heaven. And the angel come down and sent him to the man of God. Your receptivity to the Spirit of God is solely based upon your hunger for it. Verse 45, I know this is a little along the line of Bible study, but I preached this morning. Huh. And they of the circumcision, that's the Jews, which believed. That's the Jews that had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost that went with Peter. Were astonished. Why were they astonished? Because that on the Gentiles also, everybody say also, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Verse 46. How did they know they got the Holy Ghost just like they did at the beginning, Brother Pete? How did they know they got the Holy Ghost just like they did at the beginning? Brother Doyle, before they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. <laughs> and let me tell you something, honey. 
I know what I'm doing tonight. The Holy Ghost has done moved, but now he wants to fill somebody. He's still filling people with the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking in other tongues. Because, Brother Eugene, I, gotta keep, I can't keep going back to it. That's one of my favorite songs because it, it says what I'm thinking. I was there when it happened. Sister Nadine, I talked in tongues when I got the Holy Ghost. And I talked in tongues when I prayed through to the Holy Ghost again. And when I prayed through the Holy Ghost again, I talked in tongues again. And now I ain't happy if I don't pray through the Holy Ghost and talk in tongues as often as I can. Because I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Say, well, I don't know if I believe that talking in tongues or not. And you know what? You're entitled to believe what you want to. But all I know is the Bible says it. I obeyed it. And I did it. Oh, yeah. And then answered Peter. Can any man forbid water? That these should be baptized who have received the Holy Ghost. Because I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Next verse, let's stand. And he commanded them to be baptized. Brother Billy, on the day of Pentecost, they're baptized in Jesus' name. Brother Robbie in Samaria, they're baptized in Jesus' name. And in Cornelius' house, they're baptized in Jesus' name. And even go further, Brother Rice, the 12 disciples of John the Baptist were rebaptized in Jesus' name in the 19th chapter of Acts. The only way they baptized in the Bible, after the crucifixion, was in the name of Jesus Christ. Why not, Brother McKinney? Why not? Because it's the only name. Brother David, Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Holy Ghost moved in a mighty way this morning. The Holy Ghost has moved in a great way tonight. If all it's done is break up the ground for the seed to be planted. If you're here tonight and you don't know him through the power of the Holy Ghost, I come to tell you that God is no respecter of persons. All you have to do is repent. You repent and then you believe with all of your heart. God will fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You begin to praise him. I've got some water in there. By the time you get the Holy Ghost, I can have it full up. It might be full enough right now for me to baptize some of you. <laughs> I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But on that great judgment day, Brother Rice, we're going to be judged by two books, the Bible and the book of life. So I'm encouraging you tonight to believe that God is no respecter of persons. You've heard the same message Cornelius preached. I mean, Peter preached to Cornelius' house the very same message. I feel, Marcus, I feel like he probably didn't preach no more than five minutes. And they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you don't know him through the power of the Holy Ghost, you need to know him that way before you leave tonight. And it's your privilege. It's your privilege. You repent, which is saying, Lord, I'm sorry for everything I've ever done in my life. 
anything that might have been a sin, I'm sorry. For anything I've said ugly, anything I've done out of line, anything I watched on TV or the Internet that I shouldn't have, anything I've read that I shouldn't have, any kind of relationship I've been in that I shouldn't have, anything I've put in my body that I shouldn't have, I want you to forgive me for everything. David even said, Lord, forgive me for the secret sins. Forgive me. Search me, Lord, and know my thoughts. And if you find any evil thing in me, take it out. Forgive me. Forgive me of all of my sins. Lord, I'm turning away from the world and I'm turning to you. I'm turning my back on the world system and the world's standards and the world's way of living, and I'm coming towards you. i got to let you know right up front, I don't know all there is to know, but I just heard the preacher say that you're no respecter of persons. And that you died for me. That you died for me. And I heard him say uh, that I've got to be in the likeness of your death, burial, and resurrection. So I'm coming down here to die, Lord. I'm dying out to the flesh. I'm dying out to what the flesh wants because all I want is what you have for me. I need the Holy Ghost in my life. I need to be filled with your spirit. So here I come with a repentant heart. And once you've repented, and you're the only one that knows how long it's going to take you to die. Once you've repented, in Acts 2, they got the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, they got baptized before they got the Holy Ghost. Acts 10, they got the Holy Ghost, then got baptized. Okay? you Once you've repented at this altar, you lift your hands up, and let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is promised to you. It's a gift that you receive by faith. And you begin to praise the Lord. You begin to, by faith, praise him for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And God will immediately fill you with the Holy Ghost. And here's what happens. Here's what happens. The Holy Ghost will move on you. And there will be words begin to come into your mind that don't make no sense to you. That are ignorant to you. And there will be a fear come upon you because I can't say that. I can't speak that. That don't make any sense. But what you're doing when you do that is you're yielding to the power of the Holy Ghost. And you're completely surrendering everything, everything to him. And if you will speak those words, the, 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 the last stronghold will be broken. And the, 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 the washing in of the well of the Holy Ghost will spring up within you. And God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And your life will never be the same. And then you get up and we'll go baptize you in that baptistry in the name of Jesus Christ. And then from then forth, you walk in the righteousness and the fear of God. And when the trumpet sounds, you'll be called up to meet the Lord in the air. That, my friends, is the plan of salvation. And just as God is offering it to everybody, it will be required of you. Let's sing.